here. We're having a little, there we go. Hey, good morning. I'm Clark Stamper with 104.7 The Fish Midday Host. It's an honor to be able to interview Corey Edwards. Now, I know a lot of you probably know who he is because you've seen the movie Hoodwink. Hey, Corey, uh, thanks for being on with us today. Thanks for having me. This is really cool. So, tell us a little bit about, um, uh, well, first of all, we get, even though we're a radio station, we get tons of people who are trying to get into um, directing movies, maybe doing low-budget Christian films. How did you get started? Now, Hoodwick was a pretty high-budget animated film. How did you get your start? Um, it was really easy. You just uh, you just send your name in to Hollywood and you check a box and you direct the movie. Uh, no, I'm probably uh, about 20 years in the business now, and um, um, I started out in that area of the business where you are in a production company, and we uh, worked on a lot of um, music videos and commercials and that kind of client-based stuff. At all that time, uh, my brother and I were writing scripts and trying to break in, and it's it's a very difficult business. You've got to really love it to break in. Um, and the interesting part of uh, Hoodwin's story is that it was not what I was setting out to make as my first film. Uh, it was I had been working in animation since college, just kind of dabbling in, in directing some small animated projects. We got to know an investor through a, a, our Sundance film. I'm going back a little bit. But uh, my brother took a film to Sundance that I produced, and that allowed us to meet a lot of investors. One of those investors was interested in another film, and we laid out maybe five scripts that were all live action, um, independent films. And then he saw something that was animated that I had done and said, oh, I w I've always wanted to fund an animated film. So we naively said, well, of course we can do that. And that, uh, having no idea what we were getting into. Um, but I, I had worked on shorter projects that were animated. And so he invested, uh, this this uh, sole investor, and we started off with no distributor. Uh, we didn't even know where we were going to uh, animate it. And we ended up going to the Philippines uh, for economic reasons. And, and I don't mean we outsourced. I mean, I went to the Philippines 15 times over three years and um, worked with some animators there. And the budget ended up being around uh, $8 million, which does sound like a lot of money, but in context, uh, the average animated, computer animated movie might cost 150 to $200 million. Wow. So it's way under a tenth of the cost, um, you know, and, and it, it doesn't look like a Pixar film, but we were very proud of what we were able to make with that money, and the happy ending to that story is that in the 11th hour, the Weinstein company was just beginning, uh, Harvey Weinstein had sold Miramax and was beginning a new company, and he was looking for new films to put out right away, and we were one of his first films. So all the marketing that was poured into that was from the Weinstein company. We were very fortunate to go out on 3,000 screens, and we're uh, number two movie of that weekend. We were almost number one, and stayed stayed in the top five all month. So it, it's a it's a great success story for an independent film, and we were one of the very first animated films to be made outside of a major studio. So, so what after after Hoodwink? So what have you been working on recently? Uh, well, right when Hoodwink came out, what was um, awesome was we, uh, uh, one of my co-writers, a buddy of mine, Tony, uh, he had an idea for a movie. So we pitched a movie the week that Hoodwink was in theaters. We were right back out pitching another movie. We uh, managed to sell that. It was called Escape from Planet Earth, and that came out last February. And then since then, I've been doing uh, rewriting on a lot of uh, other films. Uh, there's a, a lot of business to be made in rewriting uh, scripts. And I've, I like to say I've almost made four films since Hoodwink. The, the way the movie business works is things come together and they fall apart. Um, I work with the Jim Henson Company, and we got very close to making a Fraggle Rock movie for fans of Fraggle Rock. I uh, remember eight. Fraggle Rock, absolutely. Yeah. Dance your cares away. And so we were going to do that traditional uh, uh, puppeteers and live actors uh, movie. That got very close. So things like that, I've, I've, I've developed several projects. And I believe that we are going to be in production this fall, within the next month or two, on my next animated film, uh, which I will, I, I can't talk about it yet because I don't know if it's going to go, but I'm, I'm very excited about it. It's, it's got action and heart, and it's, it, it'll make sense for people that are fans of Hoodwink, it'll make sense as, as another film for me. So, you're uh, with the Big Picture Conference. Tell us a little bit about that for people who are struggling to get into the business, maybe want to, to do what you're doing. Well, what's, what's great about this conference is that uh, the city of Atlanta is, is becoming such a, um, 
such a player in entertainment. And I, I think you don't have to be in New York or Los Angeles to make a movie. Um, I, I love going to other cities to to work and make movies because um, you know New York and Los Angeles it's a very condensed, uh, tough city to work in because everybody in that city is trying to do what you're doing. Um, and, and, and they and honestly they do things differently than the rest of the world from parking to uh, just communicating with other people LA is different uh, so it's very refreshing to come out here to Atlanta and see all the film production that's going on and it seems to be exponentially growing and that's I, I, I'll be honest I'm new to Atlanta I don't know a lot about Atlanta and this week has been my introduction it's been really exciting to see the studios that are going up and the work that's being done, and, I, and I've met a lot of people that are just starting their careers, and there's there's a lot of excitement to what's going on. Here's a big tip. A, a big tip is that 285 is a circle, so if you keep seeing the same exits twice, there's an idea for you. That's why I'm having somebody drive me around because I don't I, I would get lost like that. That's awesome. Well, we're so excited to have you on here, and um, the uh, sales agent who's over this is going to kill me for asking this, but I'm going to go ahead and ask. Um, I have been a budding thespian for many years, and my goal is to play a dead body on a television show or a movie. So, got anything for me coming up? Well, I think you should put together a demo of you being dead in various locations. Uh, maybe from various means, and and put together a demo, and then say, you know, here's this is my reel. This is what I specialize in. Don't they make the Walking Dead here? So they, they do. They have to walk around. There's a little more I to that. Just do straight dead, no walking involved. Yeah, I, you know, my 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 wife is a, an actor, and that's one of the first things she did was she had to lay in a coffin on stage for 20 minutes before she <laughs> came out of it for some reason. It's harder than it looks, <laughs> and yeah. as my husband can testify. I can lie still for very long and do absolutely nothing. <laughs> well, there you go. So what That's the number advice? one thing about playing dead is to not move. So you got that. That's the it. I'm good at that. So, uh, what other advice do you have, especially as a Christian in the business? I mean, you know, we hear it's kind of tough uh, being a Christian. How have you found that to be? Um, you know, I think if you make quality work, and this will sound cynical, but you're dealing with Hollywood. It's kind of cynical. If, if you put uh, people in, in seats, if you sell tickets, uh, they don't care if you worship trees. I mean, they don't, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's Hollywood. Um, so if you have a belief system, a deep core belief system, that means you have scruples, you have taste, you will say no to some things, and that becomes very valuable in Hollywood. I have, I've turned down some very lucrative things, uh, movies or jobs, um, because it was something I didn't want to put out into the world. And you will blow people's minds when you turn things down in Hollywood. Um, when you say, that's not for me. Um, I found I was very nervous to do that because I need work like everybody else. But, but it turns out that that makes you more valuable when you uh, stand on what you believe in. And, and I think that if you have a faith-based system, you know, if you have a belief system where you want to put certain things out into the world, there's a little more responsibility you carry with you than just entertaining people. Um, but I think those are the better movies, the better television, when you speak to people's uh, core values, and, and I believe those are universal truths, the, the, the Christian values that a lot of people have in this country and all over the world. They're just basic universal truths that really speak to human beings. And if you put those in movies, people respond. You look at the top ten movies of all time, and those speak to a lot of those universal themes and universal values that people have. So, and so it's not that weird. I think that the, the, the biggest responsibility is to make high quality stuff with what you're saying. I think that a lot of Christians get very excited about the message they have, and then they're so excited about that that they don't, you know, make sure that they have quality sound or lighting, or, uh, that they get the best actors they can get, or that the script is right before they start. Um, you know, it's, it's bad when you, you see something that's been uh, done by a Christian filmmaker and you can just tell by the lighting or the quality of it that, oh, I guess this is, this is one of those Christian films. And, and that's not what we want. We want our best out there in the world. So, I mean, that's, that's what I always try to, to tell people is make sure you are the best artist you can be. Well, thanks so much. As we wrap up here... Um what are some tips that you would give to uh, would-be directors uh, as 
you know, if they are going to be coming to the big picture conference or maybe they can't attend? Um, one of the things that uh, it's so hard to answer individual questions about um, someone's career, like whether they should do this or that, because my career is going to be very different than their career. Everybody's path is different, but, but I found the one thing that always seems to work is uh, two things. This is like a comedy routine now. Five things. Uh, <laughs> no, but, but, but one core thing is to know yourself as an artist, to know what you're good at, what you're bad at, what you need to work on. Um, what you want to say to the world. Once you know yourself through and through, you're going to be a more confident artist. You're going to respond to your instincts. Um, but the other thing that I just thought of was just making stuff. Uh, I'm saying that a lot now at, at speaking engagements. Make stuff. Um, the more you make, the more uh, scripts you write, the more short films you shoot, um, the more you're on a set, the more you are improving yourself as an artist, the more you are meeting people on set, the more likely you are to get an agent, the more you, uh, the, the higher likelihood that you're going to get ahead in this business than just taking meetings or talking about what you want to do, um, finish things, complete things, get out there with the camera or sit down at that laptop every day and write that script. And the more that you are self-generating your own material, the more the world is going to come to you. I, I think that a lot of times people wait for years at big break. You may, don't, don't consider anything a big break. Consider it a one long series of tiny breaks. And just keep doing your thing and doing it as, as well as you can, and um, that's going to yield something. Great motivation. Great advice from me and everybody else. <laughs> really appreciate talking to you, and thanks so much for being a part of the show today. Thanks. This was cool. Thanks for having me.